Dell knows there's nothing small about your small business. That's why this is their biggest Black Friday in July sale ever. Get up to 40% off and shop deals on PCs with Intel Core processors, plus enjoy free shipping on everything. Dell's small business technology advisors are waiting to help you find the best deals on the right tech for your needs at 877-BUY-DELL. To shop savings that are anything but small, visit dell.com slash business deals or call 877-BUY-DELL. So today on the show, we've got Greg Cody and Dugat saying that they like France today, but they're thinking Belgium. I don't know what that means. I don't... uh, I'm not saying that. I'm saying whatever Mike says. Mike and Greg are both saying that. Well, They're both okay, saying that. Okay, fine. I like okay. whatever Mike likes. That's it. I, I understand, but I'm I'm I, what I don't understand is what Mike likes because he likes France. The head wants Belgium. The heart wants France. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, um, yeah, Belgium has never won a World Cup, so they have that incentive behind them. Um. You guys are saying that this is the final. You guys are saying... I'm not saying that. I am. I think either winner today will be favored over, presumably, England, and would be clearly favored over Croatia, in my mind. Favored is different than actually winning the thing. It's coming home. Indeed. Wow. Oh, that's so. the beauty of soccer. Can, can you guys explain this part to me? Because I've I've mentioned before my theory that if you're someone... Who cares about soccer? What you want to see advance is the names, the powers, the superstars. You don't you don't want Croatia here. But in sports, usually, if Croatia arrives here, something like Croatia arrives here, um, they get to be lovable underdog. They get to be embraced. I mean, these these right other, up until the final they, four, but though. No, I think. well, but I'm saying all th- all three of these other countries, whether they Belgium is one or not, these are these are you know. Soccer significant countries. Mm-hmm. Cro- Cro- what the hell is Croatia doing? In I mean, here? Croatia's got a lot of tremendous players that play for a lot of big clubs. But I think in terms of recognizability, um, a lot of the the, the th- England, Belgium, France, a lot of those stars play in the Premier League, which is a lot more visible here in the United States. I think there are forty total Premier League players in these semifinals. Whereas Croatia, Luka Modric plays for Real Madrid. That's one of the best, biggest clubs in the world. Uh, European champions. Uh, Ivan Rak- Rakitic plays for Barcelona. There's a lot of good players on that Croatian team. It's just hard to pronounce, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Wait, so this is not a big underdog story? Like, Mike, let's say the United States did make the World Cup, and they made it to the to this round, to the semifinals. That would be a huge story. It That would be more of a surprise than Croatia making it, of course. Yeah, right? yeah I mean, yeah. Croatia, out of the options, I actually think England's probably the biggest underdog because Croatia has a team that was bordering on old they had a golden generation, and this was supposed to be the tail end. Uh, I guess to the the layman or the casual observer, Croatia is probably the underdog in this situation because England is just such a known soccer power just because of the names. But England, they're ahead of schedule. This yeah. was uh, the reason why this has taken the, the nation by storm over there is not just because they're in the World Cup semifinal because that's a big deal regardless, but it's because they're kids and they're playing fun football, and that's not something that usually goes with a, an England national team. It's always controversy. It's always all over but the, the tabloids. The thing- that I wanted to ask you guys is does anyone want to see Croatia beat England? No. England is is the favorite, the the people's favorite in this uh final four, I think. I think most people want to see England and France, right? Well, and, yeah, most people want to see England and either. Yeah. They don't want to see Croatia. Bel- Bel- Belgium's got a lot of stars. If you follow the uh, the English Premier League at all, you you recognize a ton of those Belgian names. Um yeah. but yes, no one I think I think most sports fans that are just pa- casually paying attention to the World Cup want to see England in that final. I, I will say this about Croatia. They have made the final four once before. They're not coming out of nowhere. Uh, I just think that, uh, particularly to the American sensibility, uh, a team from Eastern Europe is going to be tougher to embrace as warm and fuzzy. They do have the coolest kits, though. What about rooting for Putin? <laughs> that, that's done. I don't know if you caught the memo. They're they're gone. Yeah. I know. No, I understand. No, I, no, but you know, but what what Cody is saying about you just can't root for 
<laughs> Eastern Europe. Right. I mean, well, also, you couldn't root for that playing cell. Those games were dreadful. I don't know how those guys found all the energy. It was kind of weird that these Russians would just run around chasing the ball that was passing. It was almost as if, I don't want to say it. <laughs> it was the game of the tournament, though, no? No, man. Really? You guys do this thing where if it's a, a tight game or if it goes to PKs, it's an you amazing You guys game. do this thing? Don't what, put uh, me in the group. What actually, you, you know what? You know what? I watched was, the game on the airplane, was, man. That game was exciting. It was. It was. A, it was a. There were two All goals the games are time. exciting because of the giant amounts of entertainment purposes you have on each one. That's a good point. We actually didn't have any entertainment purposes on that one. We didn't know what was going to happen. And what happened? PKs. PKs. Can't bet on PKs. No. Come on now. Okay. Yep. Explain this part to me. You guys are telling me that Croatia, if not the biggest underdog on talent, you guys are telling me that Croatia is the team in this tournament that no one outside of Croatia wants to win. And the part that I'm not getting is, no no matter what the geography or the politics are, in sports, when thing happens that you were not expecting team arrives that you were not expecting whether you know the story or whether you know the names or not just the uniform the laundry that represents we're in the final and we shouldn't be i don't understand why this country is rooting for england i don't i don't like why why it is that you wouldn't want that sports fans wouldn't want the, the little team from nowhere to botch everything versus getting England perpetual disappointment with a team that we all know is not the best English team ever that might go down as the best English team ever just because the measurement system in this sport is a bunch of one-game samples and one-goal samples. That may be true, but the same countries keep winning them. So it's kind of weird. You have these one-game samples, yet it's Germany, it's Brazil, um, France uh, since you know the 90s has been in that conversation. But I actually think England's become that lovable underdog yeah. against all odds, which is I, how are weird they allowed to, say. to be the lovable underdog in the game against the underdog? Because I actually <laughs> right when they invented the game, I'm yeah, kind they of invented with you on the this. game. They're well, bringing I mean, the trophy home and they're trampling Croatia. To I mean, do it. China says they invented the game. I mean, there's a big rift going on here. China says they invented it 200 years before England did, but England is claiming stay. Like they have really put their their flag in the you know their flag in the ground here, and they are saying, "Hey, soccer is ours." And China saying, "No, soccer is ours. We were 200 years ahead of you." Uh, this is a big, big. We should, we need to get to the bottom of this. Who invented soccer? Well, I mean, I think it was made in China. England invented soccer, and that's the reason why it's a great story if they win. Oh. They haven't won since 1966, okay? Beatlemania was still When's going the last on. time Croatia won? They have never won. <laughs> When's the last time Belgium won? Okay, it, it, you, you can't honestly be wondering why more Americans are rooting for England, given our, our ancestral roots. I mean, by tenfold at least, we tend to be more of an <laughs> English-rooted really think, country you think, than a Croatia-rooted country. You think, you think country. that's the reason our ancestral roots are the reason yes, that the U.S. is rooting for Yeah, rooting why do you think England? I'm rooting for France today? Well, that's why I want Croatia to win. I like to stick it to King George III anytime I get a chance to. All right, well, that's fair comment. Good analysis. Well, speaking of fair comment, <laughs> you should have heard Guillermo ripping Elon Musk because he's now because he's now taken on Stugatz's personality. I am Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell people what you're talking about now because this, this Stugatz was first to this particular uh, take. And since that take, it has taken on a number of different followers and <laughs> army sergeants. And he has collected a, a lot of warriors in the war against Elon Musk, one of whom was Billy earlier today. Well, we were laughing because uh, there was this whole, you know, the soccer team that got stuck in this cave in Thailand, which is not, you know, really? funny, obviously. <laughs> it was not not a good thing. That's the entire team is out, by the way. Exactly. The coach. Everyone is safe. Yeah. So, so now it's funny. Now it's time to safe. laugh. Exactly. So we were laughing at the fact that Elon <laughs> decided, you know, to pitch in. And he made this little mini submarine in a pool. And he decided to fly over to Thailand and take his submarine. And he had all these videos in caves. But his submarine was way too big for this mission. It couldn't go around corners. It, it was it was too wide. They couldn't use this submarine. So he ended up just leaving this summary be, submarine behind in case they wanted it to use. When they told him, we can't use this, Elon. And the whole time he's taking videos. Oh, I'm in Cave 3 helping. It's like, you're, you're, I feel like you're in the way and you're just bringing along expensive toys that no one can use. So we're kind of laughing at that. The part that I don't get is that Stu Gotts 
is Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> like, Elon Musk seems to, no matter how many cars he's not able to produce in time or any of that stuff, he still keeps getting raises and he keeps getting praised by everyone. And he's the Iron Man and he's this and he's that. And he's like this people's champion. But a lot of these things are just things that don't actually happen. Right. Which is Stu Gatz, which is why I don't understand why he doesn't like Elon Musk. I have found myself, Billy, um, hating myself. That's that's why I've arrived. Like any guy who is like any person who is like me, I despise that person. That it's is weird. That man. has been a fascinating one of the more fascinating evolutions of this particular slop fest. <laughs> is Stu Gatz's outsized rage against people who behave exactly as Stu Gatz would in the same circumstance. Because if there were kids in Thailand stuck in a cave and Stu Gatz had some nature bee to promote, he'd show up with a submarine full of nature bee telling people, you need to talk to my good friend here in Hawaii every day at the same time. Mike Buck. I mean, I'm trying to imagine him if he had his means, what he'd be doing. Like, last week, much like Elon Musk just appeared in Thailand because something was going on there, Stugatz just appeared on two television shows because there was something going on in L.A. where he was. Like, you guys are almost the same person. He's just a lot wealthier. Yes. You need to figure out how to get all that money for your ideas that don't amount to anything. Did I'm, you? Did, did you? Working on it. Was it you or Mike Buck that had the business card b Mike Buck, and then they made me a BSitter, and uh, I still have those business cards. BSitter. I wish uh, Chris Cody were here because it was that one time that you made Chris Cody pick Mike Buck up from the airport. And he had- oh, yeah, I remember him say- telling me about that. Wait a minute. I got is, that is, picture. Is, is that the time that Mike Buck wore the light blue uh, sports jacket from the 1970s? Yes. That's the time. Yeah. That's the same time that Mike Buck was in the studio and Stugatz was hiding in the break room to not talk to him in the breaks. Really? He never does that. <laughs> he saddled us with this Mike Buck in studio hit and we had to pick the dude up from the airport and Stugatz was nowhere to be found, avoiding him at all costs. But I never do that. Think how bad it had to be. I mean, Elon Musk has never done anything as despicable as what Stugatz did on that trip. <laughs> Flew in Elon Musk. I'm sorry, he flew in Mike Buck and he made all of us spend time with him. <laughs> I didn't fly Mike Buck in. <laughs> I will say Christopher loved that assignment. He didn't know any better. <laughs> Cree, <laughs> clean, green New Zealand. Remember those calls? I'm trying to remember. That was an advertising campaign. Major B-E-E. Your mom loved that product. It was very successful with my mother <laughs> um, and for this radio station. Every day for how many years were we selling Nature Bee around here? And then one day it was gone with no fanfare. No. Mike Buck's still doing his radio show out in Hawaii. Yeah. He reached out to me recently. How's he doing? <laughs> you yeah. didn't reach me to respond. <laughs> you ignored him. He actually uh, he called Len, our program director, and somehow Len got the message over to me. About a month ago. What Still is, haven't responded. What, what is, <laughs> uh, Want to have a talk. What's the time difference in Hawaii? Mike Buck next! <laughs> this is your bedroom. This is your bedroom with Blue Chew. Blue Chew uses the same active ingredients as in Viagra or Cialis, but now comes in chewable form. Chewable means better, cheaper, and works faster than pills. No in-person doctor visit, no waiting in line, no more awkwardness. 100% online at bluechew.com where your first order is free. Just pay $5 shipping. Use promo code DAN at bluechew.com and restart the party. Hey guys, it's Billy. Hey Billy! So hey, here's, Bill. here's the deal. This, you would think, is a slow time in sports, right? And you would think some people would be like, you know, I don't want to do this segment right now. Which, I mean, may or may not be why I'm talking. But, guess what? <laughs> I have notes that I took when I found out that I was going to be responsible for this segment on the Panthers, the Heat, the Marlins, the Hurricanes, the Dolphins, and soccer. And you know what? Since Greg is sticking around... Oh, Stugatz is waving. I think he's leaving. Since Greg is sticking around, Greg, I'm going to give you first choice on what subject you want me to talk about. Oh, wow. That's uh, an honor that, that I would get to launch this bit. Um, Panthers, I would say uh, I would say soccer because that's today, man. That's that's what's soccer. happening. I'm so glad you picked soccer. So here's the deal. As you all know, we have multiple soccer experts in here right now, but 
the OG of soccer in this market is Greg. Greg used to cover the strikers for the Herald, right, Greg? I did, yeah, back in the late 70s. So, Greg, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. This week, you know, as the soccer expert on the show, your son hasn't been here, and you've been babysitting his baby. And I was kind of wondering how that's gone, if you have any tales you could tell us on how that's gone for you. I don't know if you guys know this, but Chris and Roy, we have a cute off with them every once in a while where we have each of them tell us a cute story and we'll vote on whose child was the cutest. Now, Chris isn't here, but Greg's had a whole week of Graceland being cute, I'm assuming. Yeah. So I wanted to know if you had any great stories from this week you've been babysitting. A whole week. Man, uh, what a, a joy and a, and a challenge to uh, be responsible for a six-month-old for uh, eight, nine days, uh, including this evening. Uh, and then Christopher, I think, gets back sometime tomorrow. Um, it's just been wonderful. I mean, the bonding has been terrific. Uh, this little 18 pound person is uh the the joy of my life uh but at the same time man any parent of a young kid knows it's unrelenting it's it's constant it's a hundred percent um they're they're so needy and you know one minute they're they're crying their eyes out and and the next minute for no reason that they can share they're giving you a, a smile that melts your heart it's just been a, a weird Wonderful, trying experience. All those things rolled into one. What's been her cutest moment over this week? We'll have a, you know what? Live cute off right now. You're going to give us something cute she's done, and Roy's going to give us something cute. Uh, great. Well, I mean, the, the the cuteness overload is such that it's tough to pick one thing, but we had her. She's only been in the swimming pool a couple of times, and uh, we took her in the pool, and, and she loves to be lifted in the air as if she's flying, and and, and she she was just so delighted by being in the water and being lifted up and down and splashing. That was uh, that was a few minutes that uh, that I'll never forget. Roy, well, uh, Claire is beginning to crawl now. Uh, mm-hmm. We opened up a new toy for her, and she began to crawl towards it. She actually moved about five feet. That's hmm. very nice. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a close one, Mike. What do you think? Who do you think won this cute off? I'm gonna, I'm gonna request that we actually talk soccer what the hell is wow seven eight six four five six four eight three seven if you want to call in and vote on the cued off so we've done soccer now it's tough to beat crawling by the way it's tough to beat the first crawl you know unlike serena williams missing her baby's first steps roy was there for the first crawl well she'll she'll do plenty of crawling but you know we'll move on so what do you guys want to talk about next so that does soccer we'll put a big x through soccer talk right here you clearly have something against soccer, soccer. is done i would say one thing if i may i would say one thing in all seriousness about this final four you may not okay. panthers heat marlins hurricanes dolphins what do you guys want to talk about next i mean soccer. i love hurricanes hurricanes yeah Let's see the hurricane. All right, here we go. So, guys, as you know, hurricane season is back. And I just booked a cruise that I'm going to go on in about a month. And I know Greg is a huge cruiser. And I want to know if you guys think, because I think cruises might be the best vacation that there is out there. Greg? Yeah, my wife loves cruises. And therefore, I have grown to love cruises. You know <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, cruises are, are, are great if, uh, if, if you're into, like, overeating and uh, being in a confined space, uh, they are great. I mean, it depends on, on where you're going. We like to take the excursions and, and see places that we haven't seen. So I like to get off the ship. A lot of people tether themselves to the ship, and to me, that that's uh, boring. Okay, I, I know what you're doing. How do you feel about cruises with multiple days at sea? Because I feel like that's just a con to get you to stay on the boat and yes. waste money. Yeah, you nailed it, man. You have ID'd the scam. Uh, sea days are... Are the worst, and you know they fill it in with like you know lame events like bingo and you know this cannonball, Ooh, bingo, cannonball uh, d- contests and stuff like that. Oh, I love bingo too. Don't get me wrong, but uh, sea days, I'm like, let's get to the next port, let's move it along, huh? Here's the thing: I'm only going on a weekend cruise, and the the boat that I'm booked on, I realize has so much to do that I'm wondering because we're we're spending two days in the Bahamas, and each day there's a stop on the on the cruise in, in one of the Bahamas, but. There's like a wave, like a, it's called a flow rider where you're like surfing. There's ice skating. Mm. There's trampolines. There's an escape room. There's all kinds of things going on on this ship, and I'm super excited, but I don't think I'm going to have time to do it. A rock wall. I mean, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? This has nothing to do with the hurricanes. Do it all, man. Do it all. By the way, you going to Nassau or Freeport? 
Oh, I'm going to NASA, and Good. then I'm going to go to Coco Cay. Oh, not to, you baby. Know, plug any cruise lines, but oof, I'm looking forward to Coco Cay. I know you think you're being funny. That's what I'm talking about. I hate cruises. I bet there'll be a lot of Hurricanes football fans on that cruise. What do you mean you hate cruises? I do. It's so claustrophobic. Have you ever and been on stuck? a cruise? No. Then how can you <laughs> hate it? I know I would hate it. I don't like the feeling of being stuck, isolated, and I get seasick, and the rooms, I feel like they have that window with the, it's claustrophobic. Oh, that's if you splurge. You could have an interior with no window. Oh, yeah, no. But it's like no. a giant, it's like a giant, whatever. You know what? I'm not even going to. All the fresh. Why? Because I don't like the way you vacation. Hurricanes crossed off the list. All right, we got Panthers, Heat, Marlins, Dolphins. What do you want to talk about next, guys? Uh, P- Panthers. Panthers. So the Panthers. Roy here. He's a yeah, Van- Roy, you know, hockey expert, allegedly. Mm-hmm. We're we just going to do another know. stupid joke. What stupid joke? We have the faraway hockey guy. Panthers, 25th anniversary. Big deal, right? Yeah, it is. Logo and everything. Speaking of that, birthday's like an anniversary. T- birthday, anniversary, same thing. So here's something that I was talking to Allison about. So we have, yesterday was Wally's birthday. Happy birthday, Wally. <laughs> and I think Roy's birthday's coming up. And here's the thing. Everybody's birthday's coming up. Is Wally a defenseman? No, no, Wally's the guy that used to work at the Clevelander. My boy, Wally. Shout out to Wally. Oh, Anyways. Of everybody knows that. Yeah. Are there so, any Wallys anymore? Oh, yeah, there's, there's Wally. Wally. Well, his Wally. name is like Waldemar or something. Name like a that. young Wally. He's only like 30. Let's not get caught Wallace. up on this. this Anyways, is aggravating. here's the point of this birthday wishes. You're not allowed to share your birthday wishes with people because then they won't come true. Who decided that? Why is that the thing that's going on? I don't understand that. Do you guys believe in that? Do you share your birthday wishes? I'm very annoyed by you right now. Oh, Why? This kept me up last night. I was a, a, a laying awake like, wh- who decided that I can't tell my wish to anybody? Why is that annoying to you? Don't encourage him. We have a caller yeah, on line one. if your wish you is something to. you don't want to come true, then you share it with everybody. <laughs> All right, caller on line one. We're going to go to you on screen. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name? Caller, hello? Hey, hey. Hey, how's it going? What's going on, Guillermo? I'm hey, what's your name? I'm calling in to uh, vote. You're calling in to vote? Matt. Falling in the boat, yep. All right, who was cuter? Greg's granddaughter or oh, Roy's was, daughter? Oh, it was easily uh, Cody's story about the pool. The way he spoke, it felt so genuine. I swear Roy has used that opening with Claire at least three times. She just started to crawl. Yeah. I'm well, with she you. actually Please, crawled, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. He's sorry. Oh, votes yeah. in. No, nope, votes in. Thank you, sir, for calling in. Seven eight six four five six four eight three seven. If you want to call in and vote, you want to call in and talk about cruises. You want to talk about soccer, even though we covered that already. All right. Let's you know my you know my grandbaby has gone straight from crawling um, through <clears throat> dumb fight to sprinting. She's now she skipped uh, walking and toddling, and my grandbaby now runs a forty in about eleven point five seconds, which is pretty remarkable considering her legs are about eight inches tall. <laughs> Throat thing was crazy, wasn't it? Sounded like Stu Gotts for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't start. I'm fine. Dumb fight. I'm fine. Dumb fight. All right, so we still got Heat, Marlins, and Dolphins to talk about. 786-456-4837 if you want to vote, if you want to talk about cruises, if you want to talk about birthday wishes. We never really got to the bottom of that. By the way, happy anniversary to Wake and Take one year ago today. All right. Let's talk Marlins, Bill. Marlins. All right. I, I think that's what you're getting at. Big right? news going on with the Marlins walk-off win yesterday. Yelich is back in town. JT, the all-star, you know, had a baby this morning. Congratulations to wow. JT and his wife. What did they name it? I don't know. Boy or girl? I believe it was a girl. I don't I don't know. I, let's, you know. Crawling yet? Know. No, went straight to sprinting. <laughs> so here's the thing with the Marlins. We had a campaign to get Lewis Brinson into the all-star game, and... It wasn't entirely successful, but it occupied a lot of my time and attention. So I'm thinking now that that's done, we should start another campaign. So if you have any campaign ideas, 786-456-4837. Now, it doesn't have to be Marlin specific. It could be campaign upon anything. So if you have any ideas on that, 786-456-4837. Wow, the call screen is lighting up. Caller on line one. Caleb. Caleb. Hey, what's up, Caleb? Hey, man, I was just calling to vote in on the baby contest. Nothing was ever cuter than a baby in water. I think that's enough said. All right. Thank you, Caleb. So that is two votes for Greg, zero votes for Roy right now. 786-456-4837. Line three, caller, what's your name? Albert. Albert. Hey, what's up, Albert? What do you want to do? Uh, Talk about cruises. All right. What do you uh, want to say uh, about cruises, Albert? Alaska. Alaska. Wow. Beautiful. 
passage. Inner passage or outer passage? Inner passage. Or, I've never been to Alaska, Greg. I feel like you've been to Alaska. On I have been before. there. I've t- taken two Alaskan cruises. Uh, inner, I think, is the way to go, uh, where you really get a sense of of the the, the glaciers looming large, and and a generation from now we may not even have glaciers. So it's a it's a particularly uh, astounding experience. Well, that's the thing about it. I want to go on an Alaskan cruise, but I'm worried that I'm not going to book it in time, and then there won't be any more glaciers. If you believe in global, well, warming. you have about you probably have about 200 years to to book the uh, the cruise because I don't think glaciers are imminently uh, dissipating, but eventually, for sure, the way we're going with global warming. Thanks, Albert. Albert, any vote on Roy, hey, Roy, or Greg? Uh, contest? I love Roy. I've been listening to you guys for 15 years, uh, but. Cody's story was all right. Pretty, three votes for good. Cody. Thanks, Albert. Seven eight six four five six four eight three seven. Caller line six. What's your name? Hello. Hey, Hello. how's it going? Caller. How you doing? Hey, what's your name? Hi. My name is Patrick. Hey, Patrick. What do you want to talk about? Well, I want to vote, and I want to give a little input on cruises. Okay. I agree with Allison. I've never been on a cruise, but I hate them. You've never um, been on I'm a cruise. Go Never been on a cruise. I'm pretty sure I hate them. Okay, you're ineligible for this. Too. Okay, who do you want to vote for? I want to vote. All right, I want to vote for Roy's child crying for the sixth time. Wow. Cool. There you go, Roy. One That's vote. Thank vote. you, Patrick. Yeah. Good talk. All right, we still have heat, dolphins. Crawling is a big we thing. Did, did I mention that when uh, my grandbaby was in the pool, she was doing the backstroke? Wow. <laughs> That, save that for next time. Wow. 786-456-4837. If you want to call and vote, you want to talk about cruises, you want to talk about Roy's birthday that's coming up, you want to talk about a new campaign. We still have campaign suggestions to get out there. Heat Dolphins, what do you guys want to talk about next? I want to talk about punching you in the face. Let's talk about heat. It is hot out. Have you guys <laughs> noticed how hot it's been this summer? Yeah, and humid I, as well. I want to go to the beach, but here's a problem. Have you guys noticed all this seaweed that's at the beach here, locally in South Beach? If anyone knows what's going on with that seaweed, please, 786-456-4837. Because there's also lice in that seaweed, from what I'm told. So you can't even get in and walk past it. It's just kind of a mess. 786-456-4837. Line 3, caller, what's your name? Hello? Hey, what's your name? What's going on with you? All right, goodbye. We can't move. 20,000 feet in the air, that call. Yeah, that guy was calling from a plane, it sounded like. seven eight six four the beach is all that sand. I love sand. Chris hates sand. So we still have dolphins. You guys want to talk dolphins? We're going to wrap this up. What are we going to do? Uh, Let's talk dolphins. You know, why not? Can't talk enough dolphins. Why not? That's what I'm saying. Dolphins legend Jay Cutler has a new show, Very Cavalry. Have you guys seen Very Cavalry yet? It is my favorite show. There's only been one episode so far, but he's basically my spirit animal. One of the best encounters he had was him and Kristen, Kristen's his wife, Kristen Cavallari, from the hills in Laguna Beach fame. Obviously, you guys know that. She's opening up a store, and they live in uh, te- in Nashville. Thanks, Allison. They live in Nashville, and he's not very friendly, and he has all these unpleasant exchanges. Great. But that leads me to a larger point when talking about the Dolphins. What kind of shows are you guys watching now that sports has kind of calmed down a little bit for the summer? Because I'm into Big Brother, but it's not great. And all my favorite shows, like X on the Beach, just ended. Are You the One doesn't start for another month. So what kind of shows would you guys watch? Wait, he's your spirit animal because he's a jerk? Because you did say he's completely unfriendly, and he is kind of jerkish. No, but he's fun. You know what show I've been is watching? Is he fun? He's the furthest thing from fun. Is he? Jay Cutler? No, no I like No, him. no, no. The furthest, furthest thing from fun has been the segment. Seven eight six four five six four eight three seven. We'll take your calls next. Hey guys, is it time to get your hair in the game? Time to claim your spot! Then it's time to check in online at sportclips.com slash check in for a fresh cut, legendary hot steam towel, and massaging shampoo. So do your hair a favor by checking in online and arrive just in time for your Sport Clips MVP haircut experience while you surround yourself with sports on TV. Get in line online at sportclips.com slash check in. Time to claim your spot! It is time to wake and take with Stugatz. 786-456-4837. That's 786-456-4837. Stu wants to hear from you. 786-456-4837. What's on your mind? 786-456-4837. Have a question for Stu? 786 456 Four eight three seven. He's taking notes. Seven eight six four five six four eight three seven. But it is up to you to get them out of him. Seven eight six 
786-456-4837. Call now. 786-456-4837. That's 786-456-4837. It is Wake and Take here on 790 The Ticket, the one-year anniversary of Wake and Take. We started this a year ago today. This is very exciting. Can't believe it lasted this long. 786-456-4837. I have thoughts. I have notes. I have opinions. I could give them to you, but that's not how we do it here on Wake and Take. It is your job to get them out of me. And the only way you can do it is by calling 786 456 Four eight three seven. One year anniversary. Happy birthday. Thank you. Mike's very upset. Greg broke the rules. You're not supposed to say anything until I ask. It's okay, Greg. It's okay. But first, we interview Mike Ryan. By the way, Allison, you get. Uh, Allison, you good? good? Allison, you good? Allison, you good? Allie, you good? Allison, you good? Yep. Allison, you good? Yep. 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 Good. 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 I'm good. Yeah. You want to ask someone else if they're good? Oh, Roy, you good? I'm good, Allison. Billy, you good? I'm good. Greg, you good? I'm good. Mike. Yeah, I'm good. Good. What are we betting today? Entertainment purposes only. Wow. That's that's what I've entertainment purposes only. We've had a lot of fun. Normally, live sporting events aren't going on during our show, yeah. but with the World Cup, with Wimbledon, with the Open Championship next week, uh, we have some stuff here. So, are we doing any doubles today? Do we have anything going on today? Any action? I consulted the entertainment porpoise. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I, I consulted the entertainment porpoise, and this game, this semifinal between yeah. France and Belgium. Yep. Yeah. It is a tough nut to crack. Should kids be sleeping? Kids should be sleeping. Okay. I think it goes without saying World Cup semifinals. You put those kids in bed. Okay. And you're going to actually have to put them in bed because 2 o'clock start. They're probably going to be up. Put them back in bed. All right. It took me a very long time to get um, a feeling for what's going to happen in this game. And this is probably the lowest confidence level I have for something I'm actually going to have entertainment writing on. But I'm a junkie, and we're going to do this. Yes, we I'm are. a fiend for that entertainment. Yep. And I can't just watch a World Cup semifinal without some sort of interest. As I told you, my heart is with France. They have my favorite player in the world, N'Golo Kante. And I think he's going to feature prominently in this game. Not a sexy player. You won't see him scoring goals. What you will see N'Golo Kante doing is marking some of the best players in the world. And Belgium has some of the best players in the world. Great attackers in Kevin De Bruyne and um, Eden Hazard. Eden plays with N'Golo Kante on Chelsea, so that's an interesting little storyline for today. But I think Belgium can attack the French backs. I think they're weak there, and I don't see enough offense from a very offensively gifted French team. So what I'm going to say is I think a couple goals are scored in this game. I think N'Golo Kante can erase a lot of mistakes, and he's the one person that can win this game for France if he plays the game of his life defensively, which he's totally capable of doing. The dude has 15 lungs, but I'm going with Belgium. Wow. Too much offense. Okay, and so uh, do we get like good prices with Belgium? Who's the favorite? Here? This is a this is a tight one. You'll get a good price. Um, if you want to go Belgium to advance and lay a little bit more on it, that way you had the benefit of extra time and you just need them to advance after the final whistle blows. Listen to me clearly. You paid for my vacation last week. I am doing whatever it is you tell me to do. Whatever you tell me to do. I mean, you are on a heater of the likes we have never seen. And so I will follow you anywhere. So you just tell me what to do. Tactically, this is a fascinating game. So many stars on this pitch this afternoon. You really can go no. You can't go wrong with having either of these teams in the final. Uh, I'm I'm really excited to watch what happens and see Ingolo Kante trying to mark both Eden Hazard and Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, we'll see exactly what uh, happens. I believe it's pronounced De Bruyne, but um, who cares? There's right. a Y in there. All right. So we're going Belgium. We're going Belgium. Right. Not with a lot of confidence. Like I said, this is a forced uh, entertainment uh, purpose. Okay. Anything with tennis? Because I uh, there's a match I like at 10 o'clock. Uh, no tennis today. However, we've decided, uh, after consulting the entertainment porpoise, that we're going to take the over and aces in that uh, Milos-John uh, match, America versus Canada. Yep. 
Um, Thirty-three to one, by the way, on John Isner to win the the entire uh, tournament. We should, Isner. <laughs> we should do that right now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna we put should. That in, yeah, that. I'm gonna put that in. Also, that might be another match where we take over uh, forty-five and a half right. games. So we have over a hundred aces tomorrow, right? Yeah. Is that what you're I don't saying? care what the total is on aces. We're taking the over on Isner. Right. Oh so, boy! All right. I'm gonna take a little ten o'clock action. Some women's tennis. I'm going to take Georges over Burton just because I am now, like, I am hooked. I am hooked to having action, entertainment purposes only, while we're doing the show. So I need something, and I have something at 10 o'clock. I just it's found really, it. It's really, what I found is it's really fun for us. Yeah. But I'm not really sure how uh, yeah. invested the, the listener is yeah. on Tsitsipas versus Isner Fair when point. we're doing that. All right. John has a good call. Isner! Seven eight six four five six four eight three seven. Let's go to John. John, go ahead. You're on Wake and Take here on seven ninety. The ticket. Good call. I mean, that's the way you celebrate a one year anniversary. Rasham. Seven eight six four five six four eight three seven. I got nothing but your phone calls here, man. I got nothing but time. I got thoughts. I got opinions. I got all of it. Go to Kelso. Kelso, go ahead. Better kick returner. Devin Hester or Forrest Gump? What was the uh, question? I didn't hear the question. <laughs> Better kick returner. Devin Hester or Forrest wow. Gump? That's a good question. An Put it on the poll, by the way. kick returner yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. or a yeah, fictitious decided. movie character? Yeah, Put that on the poll. Better kick returner. Devin Hester or Forrest Gump? Uh, Greg, who are you going with? Gump and it. Roy, who you got? Oh, definitely Devin Hester. Mike? Forrest Gump was a movie character. Yeah, but he was really? good. He wasn't real? Forrest, Alabama, Mike. Forrest I mean, Gump was a, like a movie character, and he had a kick return in a movie. Yeah, and yeah. you would think that in Never a movie... Never stopped running, though. You would think in a movie, you would come up with the most spectacular-looking kick or punt return you've ever seen before in your life. Devin Hester did that. He right. did a movie return Goes, against Duke. Devin Hester champion, all the way. He's a national champion, though. Huh. Guillermo? I like Gump. Both yeah. Gump. Yeah, I think I go Gump, I too. I like Hester, too, though. Hmm. I like both of them. It's a tough yeah. call. It's a good call, though, by the way, on the one-year anniversary of Wake and Take. Who else do we have there, Mike? Let's go to Alexandra. Alexandra, go ahead. You're on Wake and Take here on 790 The Ticket. Sue, I'm just wondering if you would ever buy Jerry Garcia's missing finger. His missing finger? Um... Yeah, I guess I consider buying it. Sure, I don't know. Is it being auctioned off? Rasham, or it's missing? What's the going rate? I think, rate on a I think it's like a half a finger. I don't know. What's the going rate on a finger? I'm guessing it's well, his finger. Is it encased in lucite, or is it just know. hanging by itself? That was a little unsanitary. Checking it out right now. Who has the most famous finger in the history of fingers, Greg? Raleigh finger? <laughs> what about Uncle Sam pointing at you? I want you. It's going to go Anthony Munoz. It's pretty good right there. Baldinger. Finger talk. <laughs> Arsenio Hall. He had a long finger. Yeah. Smokey long. the Bear also uh, had a great finger. Yeah. Jerry uh, had a wood chopping incident when he was a kid. I'd buy that finger. I would. Yeah. And and give it to you as a gift. Well, thank you. Yeah. A, I'm guessing though it's a very expensive finger. I don't know. Let's let's look it up. Let's buy it as a show. What would you do with it? Because when I was younger, I had knee surgery and they had to remove a bone from my knee because I had this extra bone chip that was out there. It was like a little hook, so they had to cut it off because it was just going to float around in there because I broke it. And I tried to get the bone from the doctor because I wanted to like put it on a chain or something just because I thought it'd be cool to have my own bone. And they like shredded it, so I never got it. But what would you do with a finger? I would keep it in reserve uh, for future graft purposes if I ever happen to lose one of my own fingers. Oh, what if you could yeah. take his fingerprint off of his finger and put it on your fingerprint, and then you had his fingerprint? What if you cloned Jerry Garcia? Wow. How about could. that? From the DNA, I bet you could. They have a job there. How about uh, Matumbo's finger? Ooh. That's actually a really good That's one. Good I'm telling you, there's a finger topic to be had. E.T.? Oh, yeah. E.T. Let's make a list here, Bill. Most famous fingers. E.T., Matumbo, 
Mike, who did you have? Arsenio Hall, which I'm regretting. No, that's not what we're talking about. It was a Ra- Raleigh Fingers. Raleigh Fingers. Yeah. Oh, I had Anthony Munoz. Munoz, Baldy. Raleigh Fingers. Did Kitseko lose a finger? Yeah, the one that fell off during a poker game. Oh, yeah. All right, who else do we have here? Good call, by the way. Abraham. Let's go to Abraham on a mobile phone. Go ahead, Abraham. Hey, what's up, Stu? Um, yep. First of all, best finger game is Gerald Green. Gerald Green doesn't have all his fingers. Also, take a flyer on Romelu Lukaku. He scored four goals so far. He's not going to be picked up by Conti in most of this game. Take a flyer on Lukaku to score a goal in Belgium, France today. All right. Mm-hmm. We're at you. That's actually a good pick. Yeah. That is a good pick. Alphonse, I like two goals from Lukaku. Alfonseca, finger. You like how many goals? Two goals out of Lukaku. Mm. I was reading, Greg. Are you a big uh, lawnmower guy? Yeah, as a matter of fact. Honda invented one that goes 150 miles per hour. Why? Well, it's funny you should say that. Somebody may have a back in my day later today that involves lawnmowers. I don't know. Wow. You never know. Wow. <laughs> the Ooh. rare back in my day. Wow. Jeez. Wow. wow. Who could? <laughs> Roy, you did that? You yeah, it was me, Billy. Yeah, exactly. It was me. Why would you need to go 150 That's miles a per hour on a lawnmower, though? Uh, seriously. <laughs> what is Honda doing? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe if you had a farm. I, I don't know. I, there is, I saw it. I've never mowed a lawn in my life. but I, And I I saved the story on Twitter only because I just couldn't fathom. I wanted to ask someone like yourself, what would be the need for a 150 mile per hour lawnmower? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Glad I saved that question. Yeah, you. thank you. Mowing it. On it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bryce Harper. Join me and the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using T-Mobile's hashtag Hats Off for Heroes. When you share your photo or video with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, T-Mobile will donate one dollar to support vets with Team Rubicon. So, America, keep posting with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, and T-Mobile will keep giving. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Official licensee of Major League Baseball Players Association.